Hey guys, welcome to another episode where I am going to be capturing all of the happenings at one of the house meetings in Midlothian, Texas. Now, one of the things I think that made this housing meeting exceptionally exciting was that there were a lot of college kids there and a lot of the college kids were from the local seminary. And so they were very skeptical, had not experienced the move of the Holy Spirit. So you'll notice in this um, episode and in the episodes to come of this house meeting, it was very intentional to do a lot of teaching, do a lot of training, talking a lot about scripture where can we find all of these truths from the scripture so jump in and enjoy so even as you're just staying in that place i'm just going to share a little bit with you guys you can don't even have to open your eyes you can just stay in that space typically a lot of times when i come to these house meetings i don't necessarily have a message i don't have a plan um so i i actually just landed I uh, landed today around 2 o'clock from Phoenix, and so I was able to spend some time yesterday with the Lord. And one of the things that God has been speaking to me about is um, just the idea of being still. And, um, you know, I, I work out in a gym, and I love to do cardio, and I love to move. I like to be active. And, uh, you know, I, I've been having some some vertigo issues, and I've been having some... so. So I'm going to a physical therapist and they're, they're giving me these exercises that are more like holds, just like, like an ISO hold. And these are hard. They're like teeny tiny little movements, like on the inside of your neck, just super tiny little. And I, this is ridiculous. You know, I can squat, wait and move. And, uh, and this act, these exercises are to just be still. And so the Lord's been speaking to me about what it looks like to do like an ISO hold in the spirit. And, and I was thinking about, all this week about how difficult it is to just get into the spirit and kind of hold that space to get into that nothing place where your mind is like you know and your your to-do list is dissipated and all your worries have dissipated all your anxieties have dissipated and and you're just in this place where you're holding that space and and so I was looking up just why would one do an ISO hold? Like, that's so hard for me. I'm like, this is terrible. I don't like to hold these places. When I looked at the, one of the pros, uh, the pros to ISO, isometric type um, exercises is um, endurance and stability. And so they said it's the, if you're having a hard time being steadfast in your exercises to stop and do some isometrics because it helps build endurance and stability and no matter what part of your body you're holding there's a core work going on I thought what a beautiful picture of God saying like look you know we we learned how to actively battle in the spirit we've learned how to be active for the Lord we've learned how to worship actively we've learned how to pray I have a client who's very intellectual and she loves to study the word and her assignment this week was to do some ISO holds in the spirit just get in a space, don't talk, don't pray, don't use your prayer language. Get into a space where you're just still and hold that space. And she's texting me like two or three times like, bro, I don't know how to get in. I don't know how to, I can't. And then I'm, just, and I'm like, yeah, it takes a lot of practice to hold that space. So as I was, um, so as I was praying, the Lord reminded me of, of the Psalm 46 where it says be still and know that I am God but if you read that in the original language it just says be still and know I am you know I've preached on that a lot and and I I've always said the beauty of be still and know I am is that he leaves it blank so that you can fill it in whatever you need me to be I am that so you fill in the I, I am peace I am confidence I am courage but the Lord asked me yesterday would you let me just leave it blank would you be okay with just I am? And you don't know what the answer is. You don't know what you need. You don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. You don't know how to fill in the blank. You're just okay with this space where you don't even know the answer, right? And which is just a totally different way to take a look at saying, be still and know I am and just let it be blank. Remember when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and he said, here's what's going to happen. You're going to have a baby. You're going to have a, you know, you're going to have, a, and you're going to name him Jesus. He's going to be the Lord. He's going to be the Messiah and all these things. And he kind of makes this statement and then he kind of leaves the vision blank. And she immediately asks, tell me the rest of the vision. She says, how can this be? 
since I'm only a verb. Tell me the rest of the vision. I want to know the completion of the sentence. And of course, the angel goes on and says, well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, overshadow you with the work of God. You will become empowered, impregnated with something that's outside of yourself. It'll be a supernatural work. And even in that answer, there's a blankness. Because still, in my natural mind, I'm like, wait, what do you mean? So like, how? So no, no, like really, how? And God's just like, I am. And so I'm going to read Psalm 46 to you because when the Lord speaks to me a passage, I like to go back and read it in context. But I just thought it was so applicable. And then I'm going to share with you. Um, I'm just going to share with you then like how I stepped into that space because I think we learn by hearing people's experiences. That's why Jesus told stories because it presented possibilities to people. Like many of you are probably sitting in this room going, so how do I get into that space and ISO hold? Just hold that space, right? Um, so if you would just close your eyes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read Psalm 46 to you. God, we just believe in the power of your word to just cultivate an atmosphere for the supernatural. We thank you, Lord, that your word is supernatural. We thank you, Father, that your word transforms our hearts and our minds. And we just declare that even as the word is spoken out into the atmosphere, Father, that life is being loosed. Healing is being loosed. Hope is being received. We thank you, Lord. Verse 1 says, God, you're such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You're a proven help in the time of trouble. You're more than enough and always available whenever I need you. So we will never fear even when every structure of support is crumbling away. We will not fear even when the earth quakes and shakes, moving mountains and casting them into the sea. For the, roar, for the raging roar of storming winds, crashing waves cannot erode our faith in you. And then it says this, if you read it in the King James, the New King James, it says, Selah. If you read it in the Passion Translation, the voice, sometimes the message says, pause in his presence. Just do an ISO hold here. Just hold it. Just hold it. God has a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to his people. So I'm just asking the Holy Spirit that even as you're holding that space in the heavenly pause, that he'll begin to show you just the sparkling river, his sparkling presence, the glory of the Lord just beginning to flow over you beginning to wash over you, beginning to cascade over your heart. You do it, God. I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to read it again. God has a constantly flowing river whose sparkling streams bring joy and delight to his people. His river flows right through the city of God most high into his holy dwelling places. So if you would just allow the Holy Spirit to navigate your mind into a deeper space, just allow him to navigate you into a deeper space. Come on, I'm not taking you there. The Holy Spirit is. Allow him to take you into a deeper space. We silence the mind. We thank you, Father. We want to hold the line. God is in your midst. He is secure and never shaken. He is secure and never shaken. Come on, that's the endurance and the stability that's being groomed as you hold the line, as you hold that space. So as you're in that space, I want you to, just for a moment, I want you to speak to the places in your life that are shaking around you. Don't look at it too long because we want to hold the line. This river is going to become our anchor. So just in your mind, you can out loud if you want. You can speak in a tongue at that thing, but I want you to tell the things that are shaking around you to be stilled in the name of Jesus. And 
And as soon as you finish it, I want you to come back to that river. That river is going to be your anchor. It's going to keep bringing you back to that space. The I so hold in the spirit. passage goes on to say, when the nations are in an uproar, with their tottering kingdoms, come on, when your life is in an uproar, when you're being tottered back and forth by your circumstances, by your friends, by your schedule, by your emotion, by your anxiety, by your fear, when they are in uproar, the Bible says God simply raises his voice. Then everything begins to disintegrate before him. Come on, this is the power of his presence, that everything begins to disintegrate. So I'm just asking the Holy Spirit even now that he would begin to raise his voice in your hearts. Come on, you guys are going to walk out of here changed, a little more empowered. Just let him raise his voice, the, just turning that knob up, that you're more attuned to his voice. If you so feel led, you can touch your heart, touch your ears, touch your mind, wherever you feel like you hear or sense the voice of God. And so, God, we just, we just loose the louder voice of Christ in our life. We just loose the louder voice. goes on and it says, here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. The commander, the mighty Lord of angel armies is on your side. The mighty Lord of angel armies is on your side. The God of Jacob is fighting for you. Pause in his presence. Selah. Come on, we're just allowing the psalm to walk us into the glory of the Lord. It goes on and it says, everyone look in your, in your mind. Just look up. Come and see the breathtaking wonders of God. Just allow the Holy Spirit to begin to show you things in your mind's eyes. See, your imagination is the Lord's writing tablet. That's where he begins to show you things outside of your natural realm. Look up into the imagination, into the spirit realm, and allow him to begin to show you breathtaking wonders that he has in mind for you. For he brings both ruin and revival. He makes the one who makes conflicts end throughout the earth. Goes on in verse 10 and it says this, Surrender your anxiety. All right, come on now. The psalmist has walked us into this space, and he's teaching us how to pause and hold the line in that space. And here we are, and now we have an invitation. See, I mean, the Holy Spirit, he's a gentleman. He's not going to yank that anxiety from you. He says, baby, just give it to me. Just surrender your anxiety to me. So if you would, I want you to grab a hold in your mind of that thing that's causing you angst. And I want you to see yourself just grabbing that thing and loosing it. Drop it in that stream of river. Just release it to the presence of the Lord. Then it goes on and it says, be still and realize I am. So go ahead, if you feel like you have a, a way you need to complete that sentence, God, I need you to be this. Or maybe God is inviting you tonight to
to just leave it blank and trust him to fill it in as you go. You don't need to know who he is going to be to you. You just need to know he is. I am God above all nations. I am exalted through the whole earth. Here he stands. The come here, come on, you guys. The psalmist was a human just like us. He was praying. And there was such a confidence that he said, he's standing right here. He's standing right here. He has not changed. He's a God who still enters into your space, and he stands right in the middle of your space. He stands. Here he stands. The commander, the mighty Lord of angel armies is on your side. He says it again. The God of Jacob is fighting for you. It goes on, it says, pause in his presence. So you'll notice that the enemy will work hard to try and distract you from that space. God, tonight we want to learn how to just be in your presence. Come on, a lot of times we go to these house meetings and and we need God to be something for us. But tonight, he's just here to be I am. Just hold that space. Hold that space. Allow him to strengthen your core, build your endurance, and bring stability into your soul. Even as we just practice holding that space. The Bible says a man who prays in tongues that his mind is fruitless. When I was raised, they taught me that that meant it was bad. It's bad when your mind was fruitless. But I'm here to tell you, we our mind needs to be a little less, less fruitful in the spirit. And sometimes we just need to be more quiet, have no thoughts, not come to God with all of our requests, but let God begin to drop into you the things he wants you to be praying for, the things he wants you to speak into, the things he wants you to grab hold of, the things he wants you to take authority over, let him show you. We have no agenda, God. We have no agenda, God. We have no agenda, God. Now, with everybody's eyes closed, if you would, without looking, if you are feeling or sensing something in the spirit, if you would just raise your hand up in the air for me. Good. Almost everybody. And the reason why I ask you to raise your arm is it just looses, it activates, it says to the Holy Spirit, I feel you, I sense you. So a lot of times when I'm in that space, when I begin to see or sense something, I will begin to speak into that. God, I feel heat. And I don't know what it is, but God, I just declare that your presence is moving on me and I feel heat. God, I feel a movement on the right side of my body. I don't know what it is. God, I, I don't know what it is, but you keep bringing this person to mind. And so I don't, I don't know what you want me to pray about or whatever, but I just, I just, whatever you say, God, I just speak into that person's life. See, we don't have to have all the answers. We can just, I so hold. We don't have to be doing reps in the spirit. We can just hold the line. If you would, if you're seeing or sensing a vision in your heart or in your mind, if you would raise your hand for me. You're seeing, sensing. Good, good, good. Lots of people. Perfect. 
Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. So, God, we just thank you that you're activating prophetic anointing. So this is the spirit just beginning to navigate you in your prayer. Look, you don't have to have all the answers. I had two pretty strong visions yesterday. I have one was dark and one was light, and they happened boom, boom. One was on my left, one was on my right, so it was my past and my future. And I pretty much dismissed the dark one because I knew it was a distraction trying to enter into my ISIL hold. So we come to these house meetings sometimes wanting to be equipped to learn how to do things. But I think first we just need to learn how to be, just how to be in his presence and let God be. Let him be I am. Just let him be I am. You don't need to have all the answers. Just let him be I am. Do you trust me? I am. Because I am. Will you trust me? Because I am. Don't let your mind fill in that blank right now. Just let it be. Just let it be. Is there anybody in the room that's experiencing any sort of shaking or trembling in your physical body? Shaking or trembling, anybody? A couple? Okay. So again, we're going to speak into that. We know that the word of the Lord was received in the scriptures with trembling. The Shekinah glory of the Lord is the weightiness of the spirit. Anybody feel like things have gotten a little heavy in the room? Like maybe you feel like you have a heavy blanket that's on you. Maybe the air feels a little thick. Okay, that's the glory of the Lord in the room. So we just recognize the glory of the Lord is in the room. Anybody have any visions of anything gold or flecky or speckly, sparkly in their mind? Couple, good. Again, just the glory of the Lord. He'll manifest differently for each one of us. So God, we just recognize that you're manifesting your glory to each one of us. Your presence is in the room. We embrace the weightiness of the kingdom. We embrace the holy hush. And we just call this the holy hush. I call it the pocket of God. I just want to tuck myself into his pocket for a while. I'm just going to tuck myself in it, into his pocket. Just hide myself into his little cubby with the kingdom. So now while you're in this, this space, if you have any pain in your body, any ailment, any affliction, go ahead and take authority over that spot in your body. Just declare that the glory of the Lord is upon you. Take authority over that pain. Tell it to leave your body. And just let the Lord heal you. Let the Lord heal you. Let the Lord heal you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to slowly start opening up the room, but you guys play an important part in keeping this atmosphere cultivated. The Bible talks about how where there's unity in a room, that the Lord releases his blessing. So I will tell you, I do know Lisa, um, which sometimes makes it very difficult to pray over somebody prophetically. It doesn't mean we can't pray over them. She's back. She's back. (laughs) So as you were standing there, when I was looking around the room, I heard um, spirit of wisdom as I was kind of scanning past you. I really felt like the Lord was saying that he wants to give you a new wisdom. I was thinking about um, discernment and wisdom and how much they work together. In Hebrews, it talks about how the word of God is like a double-edged sword, and it divides asunder, and it divides the soul from the spirit. 
And there have been times in the past that soulish things, emotions have crowded out the wisdom of God. But as the Lord's been healing you, I really sense that God is going to begin to really loose the wisdom of the kingdom. That's just the Lord coming on you. I'm not even touching you. <laughs> and so, Father, we just thank you for the wisdom of the kingdom being released in her right now. See, as he begins to kind of move the soul aside so that the spirit can come forward. And you can begin to think and operate and respond in the spirit instead of reacting in the soul. That's a spirit of wisdom. And so we just, we let the soul go. We let the soul go. And I'm not saying we're going to let her soul, I'm not telling her to die. I'm saying she's going to let go of the soulish ways, right? Sometimes we become addicted to our own dysfunction. You know that, right? We get addicted to our depression and, and the attention that we get with it. We get addicted to our anger because I don't know who I would be if I let it go. And so when I'm saying we're just going to let that soul go, so I'm going to speak to fear. All the things you don't know, that blank space when God says, I am. Just a peace, almost an excitement in letting it just be unanswered. Whatever you are, God, you do it. Will you do it. You do it. And I speak this over you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.